welcome to the first lecture on engineering mathematics 1 the subject name for the first semester mathematics course is calculus and differential equations with the subject code 21 math 11 let us begin with the first module differential calculus 1 in that we have to study about polar curves as the name is so suggested model 1 is completely based on the concept of differentiation Instead of going to the topic directly, first let us understand some basics about differential calculus. It is a branch of calculus deals with the study of rate of change of one quantity with respect to another quantity. For example, we can take velocity as the rate of change of distance with respect to change in time in a particular direction. Simply, we can take differential calculus as study of rate of changes of any quantities defined as a differential calculus let us suppose y is equal to f of x be a function here y is a dependent variable and x is a independent variable this is because for every value of x given we get the value of y so we can take y as a dependent variable and x is a independent variable so for the function y is equal to f of x the rate of change of one quantity y with respect to another quantity x we can write it as dy by dx which is equal to f dash of x here this equation we call this equation as a differential equation for the given function y is equal to f of x so this is a differential equation this is about definition and example of a differential calculus Next, we shall study what are all the applications of differential calculus. Calculus has wide range of applications in our daily life. In the field of mathematics, differential calculus is used to find maxima and minima of a function using given graph. It is also used to find increasing and decreasing value of a function. The approximate value of small change in any quantity is found out with the help of differential calculus. In the field of physics, differential calculus is used to find velocity and acceleration of a particle using simple derivation of position vector. In the field of chemistry, it is used to find the rate of a reaction. In the field of biology, differential calculus helps to analyze population. Other than these fields, differential calculus is also used in electrical engineering, space flight engineering, finance and statistics also so calculus has wide range of applications in many fields so it is very important to study about calculus now we shall move on to the actual concept in module 1 that is polar curves to understand the concept of polar curves we must know some basics about coordinate system we all know that there are two different ways to represent any point in a plane one is a rectangular or a cartesian coordinate system and another one is polar coordinate system in case of a cartesian coordinate system any point p in a two dimensional plane is represented by corresponding horizontal and vertical distance from the origin o here in case of cartesian coordinate system this point o we can call this point as a origin so in a two dimensional plane if we represent a point p So P has the coordinates which is represented by horizontal and vertical distance from the origin O. So this distance is x and this distance is y. This is about Cartesian coordinate system. But in case of a polar coordinate system, if we consider this is the initial line, so in case of a polar coordinate system, this point O we call this point O as a fixed point. That is O is nothing but a pole. We call this fixed point O as a pole. this plane if we consider a point p so that p has the ordinates r and theta where r is nothing but the distance from this fixed point o to the point p the distance from o to p is nothing but r we call this r as a radius vector if this theta is an angle measured in a positive direction of x axis we call this theta is a vectorial angle to represent a polar coordinate system p has ordinates r and theta where r is the radius vector and theta is a vectorial angle so this is about cartesian coordinate system and polar coordinate system now we can easily understand 
the definition of polar curves. So what is polar curves? Curve drawn on a polar coordinate around a fixed point is nothing but a polar curves. We can understand this geometrically. Consider OX be the initial line. This OX is the initial line where this point O is a fixed point. We call this point as pole. Consider any point P in a plane so that P has a polar coordinates R and theta where R is a distance from O to P. This distance is R. We call this R as a radius vector and theta is the angle measured in a positive direction of X axis. For this fixed point P having ordinates R and theta, if we draw a curve around this fixed point, we represent this curve as R is equal to F of theta. This curve is nothing but our polar curve because what is the definition of polar curve? Curve drawn on a polar coordinate around a fixed point is nothing but a polar curve. We have the fixed point P having the polar ordinates R and theta. If we draw a curve around this fixed point, we call this curve as a polar curve. And we represent the by the symbol R is equal to F of theta. This is about definition of polar curves. Next, we shall study the relationship between Cartesian coordinates x, y and polar coordinates r, theta. Consider two-dimensional plane. This is x-axis and this is y-axis. Consider any point P in a two-dimensional plane so that P has first we can take Cartesian coordinates x, y. Draw a perpendicular line from P to the initial line. We denote this as Q. Now, the distance from O to Q is X and the distance from P to Q is Y. P has a Cartesian coordinates X, Y. Also, P has a polar ordinates R, Theta, where R is nothing but a radius vector, that is distance from O to P is our R. And this angle Theta is a vectorial angle, angle measured in a positive direction of X axis. So, P has both Cartesian coordinates X, Y and polar coordinates r comma theta now from the figure we can consider a right angle triangle opq now from the right angle triangle opq we have sin theta which is equal to y by r and cos theta which is equal to x by r this is because we all know that sin theta is nothing but opposite side by hypotenuse that is distance from p to q and distance from o to p here we can take sin theta is equal to y by r Similarly, cos theta is nothing but adjacent side by hypotenuse. So, cos theta is equal to x by r. Or we can take this equation as x equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. Here, x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. We obtain these two equations from the right angle triangle OPQ. So, these two equations represent Cartesian coordinates x, y in terms of polar coordinates r and theta so this is the relation, relation which represent cartesian coordinates in terms of polar coordinates consider these two equations equation 1 and equation 2 next squaring and adding equation 1 and equation 2 we get if we square and add these two equation we get x square plus y square which is equal to r square cos square theta plus r square sin square theta if we take r square as common we get r square into cos square theta plus sin square theta. We all know that by identities we have cos square theta plus sin square theta values 1. So the equation becomes r square which is equal to x square plus y square. Or we can take r is equal to if we take square to the right hand side we get square root. So this is r is equal to square root of x square plus y square. This equation is obtained because cos square theta plus sin square theta values 1. So we get r is equal to square root of x square plus y square. If we divide equation 2 by equation 1, we get y by x which is equal to here dividing these two equations means r sin theta by r cos theta, rr gets cancelled. So we get sin theta by cos theta. We all know that sin theta by cos theta is tan theta. y by x is equal to tan theta or we can take theta is equal to here tan we can take to the left hand side that this becomes tan inverse. So this is theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x. 
So we get two equation that is r is equal to square root of x square plus y square and theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x. These two equation represents polar coordinates r and theta in terms of Cartesian coordinates x comma y. That is these two equation represents the relationship between Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinate system. Here is the first derivation in polar curves that is to find the angle between radius vector and tangent or in the examination they may ask directly with the usual notation prove that tan phi which is equal to r into d theta by dr or if we take the reciprocal of tan we get cot phi which is equal to 1 by r into dr by d theta. We will start it. Consider a polar curve which is represented by r is equal to f of theta and also consider any point p in a polar curve which is at a distance of r from a fixed point o which is rather called as a pole inclined at an angle theta with the initial line. Let me draw a tangent passing through the point p and name it as pt. An angle made by the tangent pt with the initial line ox is our z. The angle between the radius vector op and the tangent pt drawn to the point p is represented as phi. Then from the figure we can write xi which is equal to theta plus phi. This is because we know that exterior angle which is equal to sum of opposite interior angles. So we get xi is equal to theta plus phi. Now taking tan on both the sides we get tan xi which is equal to tan of theta plus phi. We know that the formula of tan of a plus b is tan a plus tan b divided by 1 minus tan a into tan b. If we use this formula over here we get tan theta plus tan phi divided by 1 minus tan theta into tan phi. Call this as equation number 1. Since xi is the angle made by the tangent passing through the point p then tan z gives the slope of a tangent. Therefore, slope of the tangent is given by the formula tan z which is equal to dy by dx. This is because geometrically we know that derivatives are nothing but a slope. So we get the slope of the tangent as tan z which is equal to dy by dx. Also, we have the formula that represents Cartesian coordinates x comma y in terms of polar coordinates r and theta as x equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. Since these two equations are parametric equation in r, so that to find the corresponding derivatives, let us find dx by dr and dy by dr. Now differentiate x with respect to r by applying product rule we get here cos theta as first function r as second function so cos theta into differentiation of r is 1 plus r into differentiation of cos theta is minus sin theta into d theta by dr this is dx by dr similarly differentiate y with respect to r by applying product rule over here we get sin theta is first function first function into differentiation of r is 1 plus Second function into differentiation of sin theta is cos theta into d theta by dr. Substitute these values in slope of the tangent formula that is tan psi which is equal to dy by dx. We can take dy by dx as dy by dr whole divided by dx by dr. Substituting these two values we get sin theta plus r cos theta d theta by dr whole divided by cos theta minus r sin theta into d theta by dr. Now, Dividing both the numerator and denominator of the right hand side by cos theta, we get sin theta by cos theta plus r into cos theta by cos theta into d theta by dr whole divided by cos theta by cos theta minus r into sin theta by cos theta d theta by dr. We know that sin theta by cos theta is tan theta. Cos theta cos theta here gets cancelled, here also gets cancelled, here sin theta by cos theta which is equal to tan theta this becomes tan z which is equal to 
tan theta plus r into d theta by dr whole divided by 1 minus tan theta into r into d theta by dr. Call this as equation number 2. Also from equation 1 we have tan xi which is equal to tan theta plus tan phi divided by 1 minus tan theta into tan phi. By comparing equation 1 and equation 2 we get tan phi which is equal to r into d theta by dr or in terms of cot we have cot phi which is equal to 1 by r into dr by d theta. Finding the angle between radius vector and the tangent the formula is given by tan phi which is equal to r into d theta by dr or cot phi which is equal to 1 by r into dr by d theta. This completes the derivation. Next formula is to find the angle of intersection between two polar curves. Let us suppose two curves given to you which is represented by r1 is equal to f1 of theta and r2 is equal to f2 of theta which is intersecting at a point P. Let Pm be the tangent passing through the point P for the first curve and Pn be the tangent passing through the point P for the second curve. So finding the angle between two curves is nothing but finding the angle between corresponding tangent passing through the point P. Let Ox be the initial line and OP be the corresponding radius vector which is inclined at an angle theta with the initial line. Let phi1 be the angle between the radius vector OP and the tangent PM for the first curve R1 is equal to F1 of theta. And phi2 be the angle between the radius vector OP and the tangent PN for the second curve R2 is equal to F2 of theta. From the graph, we can easily analyze that angle between the two polar curves is given by phi1, angle phi1 minus phi2. So that angle of intersection between two polar curves is given by the formula phi1 minus phi2. Magnitude of phi1 minus phi2 is the formula to find angle of intersection between two polar curves. Where phi1 is the angle between radius vector and the tangent for the first curve and phi2 be the angle between radius vector and tangent to the second curve. Or we have another formula to find the angle of intersection between two polar curves. That is tan of phi1 minus phi2 which is equal to tan phi1 minus tan phi2 divided by 1 plus tan phi1 into tan phi2. This is very important formula. Till here we studied about derivations of polar curves that is to find the angle between radius vector and tangent and to find the angle of intersection between two polar curves. In next video we study some problems related to these derivations.